what I'd like to ask everybody to do, if you, if you haven't already, if you're not viewing this in uh, speaker view, um, click on my icon, my box for the window, and, or go to the view options at the uh, top right of your uh, Zoom and select speaker view. That will put, uh, that will put my slides at, at, a, at a big screen for you. So I hope that uh, everybody's able to see that. And um, again, I want to say hello, welcome. Um, if, uh, if you want to introduce yourself in the chat, throw in your name and where you're from. I'd love to see some of that. Um, and um, it'd be great. Any comments you want to put in there about uh, the Summit for Democracy so far? Any observations you want to share um, or uh, how you found out about it? That'd be great. So just uh, appreciate hearing from folks. And um, I'm putting in a, uh, uh, a link right now in the chat. Um, after I go through a few slides, we're going to do a, uh, a role play. I've got some scripts, and there's a link there to the script document so that you can follow along. You don't necessarily need it, but if you want to participate, especially if you want to participate um, in, with one of the roles, um, then um, uh, you'll want to... Uh, uh, go to that link. And um, let's see, I'm going to try to uh, get my uh, slides going now. Where are we at? Um, it's the first time that I've given this presentation. Um, my name is Raymond O'Neill, and I'm joining y'all from Anchorage, Alaska. Um, I got involved with PDPR. <laughs> Yay, right? Um, I got involved with PDPR shortly after being elected as a 2020 Bernie delegate, and um, I've been active with PDPR. Um, I've shown up at plenty of meetings and um, haven't understood or have uh, uh, not felt empowered at all. And um, PDPR is uh, turning that around for me, so I appreciate that. Um, let me see here. So, um, yeah, today we are, uh, my, my presentation here, is uh, parliamentary guerrilla tactics. And um, I uh, really appreciate being able to uh, visit Tom's presentation today. Uh, he knows so much myself, I'm kind of new to this. Um, as we go through the presentation, I'll try to stop periodically to address any questions. And uh, Jason can help with any questions in the chat. <clears throat> in the chat. Um, so please feel free to post there. Uh, this will be a short slide presentation, maybe 20 minutes, and then we're gonna present uh, the scripted uh, parliamentary de deliberation that I was talking about. Um, and um, can everybody uh, see me? Is everybody seeing the presentation in the big screen view? I hope so, and that you can hear me all right. Just want to uh, check, make sure I'm connecting here. Yes, um, on all counts. And great, thank you. Um, and I also kind of just want to quickly qualify and acknowledge uh, a bit of a cognitive dissonance here regarding the warfare culture. Um, as it has inspired the theme of this presentation. Um, I'm going to introduce the book that the presentation is primarily based on. Um, and um, you know, it's kind of asked to put, put aside any protestations uh, that we make of the use of the framework being offered, uh, because it is a good one for understanding the importance of uh, planning and developing tactics. Um, so, uh, yeah, guerrilla warfare is based on the use of strategies and tactics, strategies being the plan to get where you need to be, and tactics being how you use the resources at your disposal to move you in that direction. Um, both guerrilla warfare and parliamentary procedure depend on drawing in people from all sides to win. Uh, both require the use of a well thought out plan and an understanding of the lay of the land, or if you will, the rules in our case, and um, how they can best be executed. So. Um, the Guerrilla Guide to Robert's Rules, uh, in the trenches, tactics for getting your way without giving up your values by Nancy Sylvester. Uh, Nancy is a certified professional teacher of parliamentary procedure uh, through the American Institute of Parliamentarians, um, as well as a professional registered parliamentarian through the National Association of Parliamentarians. Uh, Nancy has served as the parliamentarian for the National Association of Parliamentarians multiple times thus making her the parliamentarian's parliamentarian. 
Um, and uh, I think I've got a link to her website. I want to uh, drop that in the chat real quick. Uh, <laughs> and um, there we go. Um, there are uh, a lot of useful articles and resources you can access there, including free scripts. Uh, Nancy was really helpful when I contacted her about this presentation and she apologizes for not being able to be here herself. Um, I can recommend this book as being good for beginners as I am exactly that. Um, I'll also suggest that this presentation is well suited for beginners. Um, if you're a parliamentarian, um, please interject uh, when you can. Um, the uh, information I'll be covering here um, is uh, pretty general. Um, so uh, let's see, let's see how it goes. Um, next slide, please. So um, preparation is the key. Um, it's uh, so important and that's gonna be a lot of what this, uh, uh, what, the, what we cover is gonna be about. Um, we are talking about a lot of hard work, and while there are no shortcuts, we can be strategic to improve our chances of winning. Um, certainly no military leader goes to war without knowing uh, that he has enough troops, enough equipment, a plan for the war, and troops who have been conditioned for the environment. Um, and a controversial meeting is really no different. A uh, controversial meeting, um, you know, you, there too, you need to make sure you have enough of meeting enough meeting attendees sympathetic to your cause um, and uh, that you have a plan that everyone knows and has practiced. Um, I have a quote from Lieutenant John, General Bob Brown, you learn and develop most in the operational domain by, acting, by interacting with others. And something else that I like to keep in mind um, as uh, building these teams and organizing allies is that uh, you can learn from both the good and the bad leadership that you're exposed to. Um, so uh, you wanna organize your allies, um, recruit your army. To be successful in guerrilla warfare, you need to be able to convince the common folks to assist you. It's extremely important that you select the right people to help. Uh, find the people who, are, uh, who support your issue. Um, a lot of times that can be pretty easy, um, but uh, even more importantly, find people who will support some aspect of your cause and build on that. Uh, know who is being um, nominated and elevated into positions within the organization um, and support those who will be sympathetic or can be moved to your pet cause. Um, always remember that you need to be building meeting attendance for your cause. It's so important. Um, uh, set your strategy, map your political <coughs> terrain, learn where influences lie and um, learn about the relationships that make up the network of influence within your organization. Um, think about how your team can impact that network of influence to create an environment that's favorable to your goals. Um, plan your tactics. Keep in mind that parliamentary procedure is based on the majority ruling while the rights of the, the, rights of the minority are protected. Um, it's not about minority playing games being bullies or using trickery to get their way. That's not what this presentation is about. Um, it's about getting the right combination of people in attendance and using your tactics, primarily the rules, to strategically turn the minority point of view into the majority point of view. And um, next slide, please. Um, meetings, parliamentary procedure helps organize meetings. And it's a big part of uh, knowing your terrain. There are different kinds of meetings and they require different strategies. A um, regular meeting that has a quorum and no special rules about topics can be brought, uh, no special rules about how topics can be brought before the group. Um, that kind of meeting can allow you to make a motion that was not necessarily on the agenda. Um, one that is sympathetic to your cause, especially if you see a favorable combination of members present. 
Um, so we're always looking for, that's an example of the kinds of opportunities that we're always looking for um, in knowing the terrain. Um, is it a meeting or a session? Uh, we talked a little bit about that earlier. A convention, for example, is a series of meetings while adjourned, while an, an adjourned meeting is part of a session. Um, and um, you may want to use renewal of emotion to bring emotion back to a meeting, which is allowed if it's not a separate meeting. Um, so there are some distinctions and some nuances uh, that you'll want to learn about in uh, in order to know the terrain. Um, be sure to pay attention to the application of the rules. Debate rules are different if it's a meeting or a session, generally. Um, the agenda, consider how the order of the agenda items uh, might uh, allow you to uh, position yourself favorably within the meeting. Um, the attendees, again, build attendance at the meeting for your cause, understand the relationship of the presiding officer to the organization and to the agenda and to your cause. So you kind of want to know where, where people uh, position themselves and um, uh, make sure there's a quorum, make sure that the quorum doesn't change uh, at some point in the meeting. Uh, for example, I think breakout rooms are becoming questionable. Um, you know, have we, oh, do we no longer have a quorum? May very well be the case. So pay attention to that. Um, uh, electronic meetings, uh, a little more on that. The Roberts Rules of Orders 12th edition, the latest one out, has the inclusion of an appendix containing sample rules for electronic meetings. So uh, get to know that. Um, and um, yeah, so let's see. Next slide. Uh, be proactive about the rules. Understand the hierarchy of governing documents. Um, we have the bylaws, we have the rules, we have uh, charters, we have laws in our community, um, local, state, federal. Uh, these all apply to the organization. Um, and so you wanna understand um, those, uh, those relationships. There's a potential there for you. Um, many times groups assume that if they're given a special name, for example, executive committee, uh, that they have uh, some general power that goes with that name. Uh, but in fact, the only power any of these groups has is the power that's given to them in the organization's bylaws. So always keep that in mind and be sure to look at those bylaws. If you know that rules will be adopted at the beginning of a meeting, for example, um, a convention or a conference that sets rules at the beginning, plan in advance what additional rules you could propose that might work to your advantage. Um, bylaws, so much could be said on that. Um, a lot has been already that we really appreciate. This, it is really the single most important document of, um, of any organization. Uh, knowing these provides uh, defense against anti-democratic behavior in the organization, right? We see something happening, we can check it against the bylaws and then bring the bylaws up um, as, uh, as our defense. Um, consider changing the bylaws if they need to work better for you. I know uh, we heard a, a much more conservative um, uh, position on this in the earlier uh, presentation in Tom's presentation. And of course, we don't want to be uh, frivolous, um, but uh, you know, there may be in the long game, some ways that you uh, might see to change the bylaws to help your cause. Um, custom versus rules. We also uh, talked about that a little bit earlier. If a custom is found to be in violation of the organization, organization's bylaws, rules, or parliamentary authority, and a member challenges that, the custom falls to the ground. In other words, custom has its place and it can work, but it's clearly at the bottom of the hierarchy of rules covered by the governing documents uh, of the uh, organization. Next slide. Ah, yes, I just wanted to throw that in there. The rule talks and opinions walk. So um, weaponry, uh, in uh, Nancy's book, she talks about this. Um, I've got a little bit of a synopsis here. Uh, be prepared to move forward with what you want by understanding what you can do in a meeting. 
Um, and this is primarily done with motions. It's your primary weapon, right? There are categories of motions, um, and you can learn those, but uh, they're going to have different applications depending on the nature of your cause, what you're trying to accomplish, right? So um, um, understand the concept of uh, precedence of motions. Also, this is going to indicate uh, your available options. Um, in parliamentary procedure, the process for disagreeing with the chair, which is going to be important for, uh, for us to know uh, if we want to truly become empowered in these organizations, um, the process for disagreeing with the chair involves two motions, a point of order and appeal from the decision of the chair. And we're going to go through these in a little detail with our scripted roles uh, after this slide presentation. Um, and um, use electronics to get your way. Um, I don't have a lot on that. There's uh, plenty out there. Um, primarily, it's about using uh, communications to build your allies, build your teams in preparation of, the, of your meeting. So um, I want to expand on this. Uh, precedence of motions. Understanding this concept is crucial in helping you get what you want when you're processing a motion. Uh, the concept of precedence of motions is that when any one of these motions is on the floor, that is pending, being uh, debated, um, any motion above it on this list is in order, and any motion below it on the list is out of order. It sounds simple, um, but, uh, you know, don't be, don't be misled. Um, say that a motion was made, seconded, and restated by the chair. So it is now pending and open for discussion. Say that for various reasons you don't like this motion. At this point, the pending motion is a main motion. It's at the bottom of that stack there, it's at the bottom of that list. Um, if you review the list of motions in the precedence of motions list, you see that there are 13 other options open to you at this time. Um, depending on whose list you look at, there may be 12, there may be 14. In this case, Nancy has uh, listed the primary and secondary amendments as two. Um, but uh, uh, let's say you believe that the group is upset and acting irrational. And with time, they're going to calm down and not want to make this drastic change. An option you have is to postpone, definitely, which would postpone the entire motion until the next meeting. Or maybe it's a motion you would consider supporting if it was tweaked a bit. You could move to amend the motion or move to amend any pending primary amendment. Um, as, you, uh, as you can start to see, you have a lot of options. And um, the choices can become endless as you, as you start the process. Um, in um, chapter 12 of the Gorilla Guide to Robert's Rules, you'll find a list of motions and the uses and misuses for those motions. And there are lots of other sources of material you can find online that can be helpful uh, in determining what your options are with this motion. And of course, um, get familiar with Robert's Rules of Order, uh, newly revised and um, the uh, Robert's Rules of Order in brief. I should uh, pause to catch my breath. I've been saying a lot. Um, do we have any uh, questions so far? Anything in the chat, Jason, to address? Right. Yeah, not, well, not so much a question, mm -hmm. but um, something was, was brought up to me and it has to do with uh, a comment about <clears throat> a race of people um, and someone has been offended by that. And I wonder maybe we could take this opportunity for Tom to come and, and clear that up if he's still on the line. Yeah, go ahead. What did you want? Oh, sorry, Tom. There was a, yeah. a, a comment about um, uh, Chinese people. I just uh, wanted you, maybe you could uh, clarify that your, your intention oh, of that statement. Oh, I didn't mean that in any way to be negative about Chinese or something like that. Um, it just the Chinese are have a business relationship, a lot of business. And I just asked somebody, don't sell it to the Chinese like this. I said, don't sell it to the British either. 
But no, I did not mean that in any way to be derogatory against the Chinese people. Or anything. I probably shouldn't have said it, but no, I didn't. I didn't mean it to be offensive to anybody, or I didn't view that as being negative towards the Chinese or anything like that. And it was probably, you know, I should have probably not said it because I didn't view it as I didn't. I don't have anything against Chinese, or I've never meant this in any way to be negative towards the Chinese or any other group. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I, I just uh, felt the need to address that. It was okay, I, I knew. Thank you. I, afterwards, I, you know, I just never thought about that as being in any way negative about Chinese or anything like that. I never thought about it as being negative towards the Chinese. So Yeah, it, it's something I'm working on myself. There are things that are just inherent in the way that I speak and stuff that become problematic. And uh, so anyways, thank you, Tom, for for that and thanks for the time slot and i apologize raymond for interrupting in that way please proceed. yeah thanks uh jason yeah i i uh i i will thank you um i hope everybody's all right I, I did see a comment here um uh you know being an ally is just as important you don't have to be militant to be involved here um and uh you know, I, I tried to qualify at the beginning about um, our our framing. You know, this military framing, and you know, we we really, um, you know, this country's uh, defense spending is out of control, much to uh, uh, my chagrin, and um, probably to the detriment of the economy ultimately. Uh, so, uh, we do need to be sensitive about these issues, and um, you know, I apologize if. Uh, uh, anybody's uncomfortable um, with some of the framing here. And um, I know uh, Tom has uh, ne never come across as terribly insensitive um, to me. So I appreciate uh, um, the comments earlier. Um, let me see. I'll uh, go on to the next slide. Is, is there anything, anything more just now? And uh, thank you, no. Young, for uh, bringing up your concerns. Thank you, Jason. So um, plan your tactics. This is uh, critically important. Tactics, as I mentioned earlier, actions taken to accomplish the strategy. Right? The tactics are how the group maneuvers. Uh, the tactics give guidance by providing direction and basis on which to make daily decisions. Uh, tactics can be fluid to adjust to the ever-changing environment and conditions. Um, and, uh, you know, this is why we want to be prepared. Um, one of the best ways to do that with your team is with scripts. Uh, prepare scripts. Um, and prepare for a contentious meeting by practicing the words that need to be used. Practice saying the motions. Um, practice how the chair will respond. Um, brainstorm some of the scenarios that you might expect, uh, given the um, uh, tactics you intend to implement in your meeting. That is to say, uh, what your motions are going to be and what you expect the response to be. Uh, get this all down in script and practice it. Um, look for opportunities to uh, be influencing the agenda. Um, get, uh, get material out ahead of time uh, before the meeting uh, to try to influence attendees. And um, yeah, think of other ways that you can plan tactics. There's lots of them in uh, Nancy's book um, and you can find more online. Uh, be a bully buster. All right, so guerrilla warfare is frequently focused on uh, overthrowing a dictator. And um, some dictators have many of the same characteristics as uh, you know, the, the bullies we've all seen um, in the schoolyard. And uh, it's a recognized personality type um, that all of us have come across in our lives. So watch out for the warning signs, as Tom said and uh, watch out for a caste system developing 
Um, you know, bullies will uh, try to put some of these in place. Um, bullies use a lot of the common strategies. We can all probably describe some that we've seen in meetings. Um, and these are the height of anti-democratic behavior. Um, maybe the person uh, acts like they're an expert of Robert's rules or um, uh, dominates each discussion. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, dominates discussion. Um, may um, minimize or try to ridicule those who oppose them. Uh, decisions of democratic bodies should be about what is best for the organization as a whole, right? And what supports the purposes of the organization. Some of the bully's favorite tools, uh, actually probably their primary tool is misconceptions. And uh, Tom talked about this too, you know, watch out uh, uh, for these misconceptions. Oh, we don't want to use parliamentary procedure. It's too onerous. Um, I made the motion, it belongs to me, and you need my permission to change it. These are some uh, 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 typical uh, approaches that uh, this uh, bully might use. Um, let me see, next slide. I think we're about to wrap this up here. Yeah, just to reiterate, um, you know, don't make the mountain over a molehill, don't make war when there shouldn't be one. Um, there uh, are lots of uh, um, lots of you know mistakes made in meetings, lots of opportunities to call for a point of order, and we don't have to bring them all up. Um, don't alienate anyone who is not your enemy, right? So uh, one of the ways we can avoid um, making war is by knowing the rules and knowing the bylaws and being prepared. Um, so, um, that's, uh, that's about it. Um, since we mentioned war, I'm putting a plug in for code pink, um, uh, favorites of mine and, um, references and resources. I haven't quite got everything compiled for the presentation today. Um, I do, uh, I'll drop Nancy's link again here in the chat. I think I have that handy and, um, let me see, I wanna put one more time here the um, uh, script. We're gonna move into um, this uh, practice session here where we uh, look at the script. Has everybody had a chance to um, open this script up down, uh, get this on, on their screen? Let me see, I posted it earlier a couple of times. And um, what I want to ask everybody to do is change now from the speaker view in Zoom to, um, to gallery view so that uh, we can all see each other. I'm putting a link to the script again in the chat. And at the uh, top of that script, there's a um, uh, a cast of characters that are going to be involved in our role play here. Um, and I've got some volunteers that are going to help out. Uh, Tammy, thank you for being here. And um, we'll see you next time. Has, uh, has everybody been able to uh, have a look at the script? Um, I'm uh, getting it loaded myself here. Let's see. Does, um, does anybody want to go through and do a roll call for us on the characters? Or I can do that as soon as I get it to uh, load on my computer. I have it up here if you like. Yeah. Can um, Do you want to go through? Just starting yeah, from the top? Jason. 
starting from the top? Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's call out the the uh, characters and uh, like a roll call. So um, if there are any that uh, that aren't filled with a volunteer and you're interested in doing it, just speak up and um, join the join the fun here. Thanks. Okay, so Raymond, let's start by. Um, all that I have as far as uh, take p- folks that have taken parts are yourself, myself, and Prince. So I'm going to re- go ahead and read Can, every yeah. available part, right? Yes, please. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so who would like to be Lieutenant Jan? Oh, you know what? I apologize. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong thing. There is only one, uh, rather. So I'm going to do a roll call then. Is Lieutenant Jan here? Or rather, who is playing Lieutenant Jan, which would be Maple. So then Lieutenant Jan's part is open if Maple is not here. Would anyone So like is someone to... here is someone here Yeah, thank you, Jason. Yep. What is this is like? Mary this is Mary Thorpe, I'll do it. Thank you, Mary. Hey. <laughs> and then working down the list. Here, uh, Mr. Chair, that's Raymond. Okay, so going to file. So, uh, uh, Private Ryan, is uh, Judith, uh, Madam Chair, still here? So then, if Judith is not here, the role of Private Ryan is available. Who would like to, or would someone please take the role of Private Ryan? Private Ryan going once. If not, I'll just read that part, I suppose. Thank you. I can do Private Ryan. Julia Meadows, thank you. Yay! Julia Meadows will play the role of Private Ryan. Thank Um, you. Then, uh, for Captain Crunch, I believe Prince is here. Prince? Prince may not Prince, do we have you? I saw him. So uh, a lot of the a lot of the um, slots were filled for the first session. We were going to do this twice, so some folks may have had to leave. Wow. Um, and um, so that that might be what we're up against. Does uh, someone uh, want to play the role of Captain Crunch? Come on, Linda. Maybe Tom. <laughs> 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 oh. Linda's Linda's got uh, a general mess. Oh, did Linda like. already has a spot? Okay. Oh yeah. wow, yeah. I'm, well, I hadn't gotten to it yet. Well, so why we don't have... we get started? Um, yeah. Oh, Mary can be uh, Colonel Mustard if you're still here. Yes. Oh, yeah, Mary. Actually, um, I, uh, Mary and I had a private. Hi, everybody. Uh, Mary and I had a little chat, and I'm going to be Colonel Mustard. Oh, okay. And right. Christine, Christine well, has her hand up too. Yeah, I was going to say Christine Asola has her hand up. So Christine. Uh, yeah, I, I don't care where you put me. Just tell me who I am. And Thank I'll... you. <laughs> so right Thank on. Thank you. So then, uh, let's see. How about Colonel? Wait, we're still on Captain Crunch, right? Right. Then we need, Crunch. yes, we need uh, okay. Captain Crunch, Gomer Pyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, the only one left this now is, is really good practice, folks. Is a Colonel Mustard, or we are lacking a Colonel Mustard. No, that's me. Oh, Remember? it is. I'm sorry. Then we're, we have a Captain Crunch. Yes. As, okay. Good. Then, as far as I can see, we're we're all filled up. Right on. Well, thanks for the roll call. <laughs> and um, we'll uh, we'll start we'll start uh, uh, with this we'll starting with the script and um, uh, hopefully everybody who's got a role and wants to follow along has this going on and w- what's happened here is uh, with this committee they someone has made a motion to issue discount leases for mineral extraction on uh, recently acquired property that they have. Um, and, um, it's most of the folks, uh, uh, don't think it's a good idea. Um, but there's, uh, some leadership, including the chair 
who uh, has a strong favorable bias, bias uh, for passing um, this motion. So um, I'll be playing the role of the chair and um, we, um, uh, the, the floor is open and the chair recognizes Captain Crunch. Okay, I move the committee recommend leasing subsurface mineral rights on our new land acquisitions at 20% of our current lease amount in order to attract development by the extractive industries. Second. It is moved and seconded that the committee recommend leasing subsurface mineral rights on our new land acquisition at 20% of the current lease amount in order to attract development by the extractive industry. We will now have discussion. Captain Crunch, would you care to speak on the motion? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. We need to encourage development in order to increase revenue and bring jobs to the area. Thank you. Uh, the chair recognizes Colonel Mustard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I rise to speak in favor of the motion. We must not let this source sit idle when our budgets are strained as they are. We need those extractive industries to be eager to lease from us. I see that there are several hands up, but uh, the chair recognizes General Mess. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to encourage a vote in favor of this motion. We must not delay further. Others are subsidizing the development of their resources, and we could lose access to developers altogether. I call a question. <laughs> oh, someone has moved to the previous question. Someone has called the question. Is there a second? I second the call of the question. It is moved and seconded to move the previous question. On the main motion Point. that the committee recommend leasing subsurface mineral rights on our new land acquisition at 20% of the current lease amount. All those in favor? Point of order. <clears throat> the chair recognizes Lieutenant Jan. We are voting on the current motion. What is your point of order? A motion to move the previous question, once seconded, requires a vote. And because it ends debate, it requires a two-thirds favorable vote to pass, according to Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised uh, uh, section 16, 1 to 28. I also have an additional point of order. Hmm. Well, the, the chair must rule that the uh, point of order is well taken. Uh, what is your second point of order? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion to move the previous question was shouted out from the back of the room without the speaker being recognized by the chair. This is not allowed under our parliamentary authority and it's disruptive. Thank you, Lieutenant Jaron. The chair rules that the point of order is well taken. Uh, the motion to move the previous question is not a motion that allows for interrupting the assembly. Um, we will now though uh, need to vote on the motion to move the previous question, um, which will end debate on the main motion. So again, we are um, voting on the motion to move the previous question, which will end debate on the main motion. Um, all of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed say no. No. Nay. No. Can I change my vote? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, th thank you. Um, the affirmative 
was not two thirds of the assembly. Therefore, the motion fails. Um, the motion to call the previous question has failed. Uh, therefore, debate will continue on the main motion. Uh, is, is there further debate? Well, the chair recognizes Captain Crunch. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And now that we've gotten past that interruption, I'd like to again remind the assembly here that we risk wasting an opportunity to benefit from the value of our holdings. Uh, thank you, Captain Crunch. And the Chair recognizes General Mess. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to remind the assembly here that our revenues have declined dramatically in the current economic downturn and the motion to expedite leases to developers is necessary to make up our budget shortfall. Thank you. Um, there's lots of hands up. Uh, the chair recognizes Colonel Mustard. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. We must not let the environmentalists stand in the way of our fiscal responsibility to increase revenues. Let's pass this resolution and expand development. Point of order. Uh, point of order. Um, the, the chair recognizes Private Ryan. Uh, state your point of order. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The chair appears to be calling only on members supportive of the main motion. We've heard from General Mess and Captain Crunch twice, but we have not heard from several people here who are known to be opposed to this motion. Uh, the chair rules that the point of order is not well taken. We have only a limited amount of time and we need to hear from the experts. I appeal from the decision of the chair. I'll second that motion. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the chair ruled the point of order was not well taken because we needed to hear from the experts in the limited time for debate. Um, the decision uh, from the chair has been appealed from. So now the question is, shall the decision of the chair be sustained? Is there any debate? The chair recognizes Gomer Pyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was standing and raising my hands when the motion was being discussed. Before any of us uh, who are opposed to this have been able to speak, you began trying to take the vote. The decision of the chair regarding the point of order that's been brought should not be sustained. Is there any further debate? Ah, the chair recognizes Colonel Mustard. The chair is right. We need to hear from the experts on this important matter. And we've already taken up too much of the meeting with interruptions from the floor. Thank you, Colonel Mustard. Is there any further debate? Okay, there being no further debate, we will now vote on the appeal of uh, from the decision of the chair. Um, and this needs just a simple majority. Um, all of those in favor uh, say aye. This is a vote on the appeal from the decision of the chair. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed say no. 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 All right, the no's have it. The decision of the chair is not sustained. Um, so the question now is back on the main motion. Is there any further debate of the main motion? Uh, the chair recognizes Private Ryan. I move to refer the motion to the Finance Committee for review and report back at the first regular meeting following the next financial quarterly reporting. I second. Okay, it is moved and seconded to refer the motion to the finance committee for review and report back at the first regular meeting following the next financial quarterly report. Is there any debate on the motion to refer? Uh, 
Uh, the chair recognizes Private Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Finance Committee has been reviewing the implications of discounting leases and has indicated that it might be feasible, but they have not yet provided their full report and need to be allowed to complete their study on this matter. Thank you. The chair recognizes Colonel Mustard. We know that the members of the Finance Committee support discounting the leases and time is of the essence in this matter. There, uh, there is not a rules requirement to wait for the Finance Committee's final report to make this decision. Thank you. Is there any further debate? Okay, there being no further debate, uh, we will now vote on the motion to refer. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. 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 Well, clearly the ayes have it. The motion <laughs> is adopted and the motion is referred to the Finance Committee. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, the chair recognizes Gomer Pyle. I move to adjourn. Second. It is moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs> you didn't call for a navo. Good job, everybody. <laughs> no, he didn't, did he? No. no. It's a Point of order. <laughs> Point of order, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, good, good job, everybody that participated. Thank you. Um, I, um, I, I certainly got a lot out of writing the script. I'd um, be happy to hear uh, anybody's observations and comments. I hope this was helpful um, and informative. I know it's been good for me to practice the words. Yeah. Really well written, Raymond. Good job. It was it was a, a good learning experience there, and kind of a common theme that we see. Yes, yes, um, and um, you know it's it's a lot more straightforward. You could do it a lot in a lot more straightforward fashion fictionally, right? So you know what what do we do when the chair is uh, ignoring us? Um, that can that can really be a challenge. I think it's uh, not uncommon. Yeah, this just points to me to the the need to get get our hands on that agenda ahead of the meeting and know like what what's happening in the upcoming meeting and 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 plotting and strategizing on how you know on any situation that could arise. Yeah, or yeah. try to do our best at that. Yeah, in. Um, uh, studying the, the book here, um, The Gorilla Guide, uh, probably the two top takeaways for me uh, have been about uh, building allyship, uh, bringing in um, the people that you can, and uh, the other is practicing your tactics, particularly with the scripts. So maybe consider all of the different things that uh, might be proposed um, and all of the motions that you could opt into and how they would play out. And, um, you know, it's uh, certainly not that any of your planning is uh, going to be the way that it plays out, right? Rarely do things always go as planned, um, but it's in that practice that um, the, uh, the planning itself that you – uh, discover new options, uh, that you develop your skills. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's to be encouraged, those the scripts. Anybody else? I, I really appreciate everybody's participation Christine here. Christine has, has her hand up. Oh, yes. Hi, Christine. Um, yeah, I wanted to say, like, in real life, I wanted to present a single payer Medicare for all 
at my county. They were kind of pushing me off, didn't let me talk about it. The main people in charge didn't want it. Um, so for months I went and sat there and then I brought a resolution finally. And I had to have a second to get that on. So I only had one person who I thought I could count on. So it is hard to find allies, you know, when they're afraid to speak up to what they think is the authority. So um, she said she would second it for me. But, you know, what really happened is people got to talk about it then, which had never happened in the meeting right. before. And then it, they actually voted for it and it became part of our you know, what we had listed. I was amazed that it took that one other right. person. So, and then that went on to our district. And then from our district, it went to the state of Michigan. So I was part of getting it in there, but I only had one person who seconded it. So it doesn't take a lot all the time, but it does take knowing these rules. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Oh, yeah. that's a... Uh... Yeah, that's inspiring. Great to hear. Yeah, I um, I have a little bit similar story. I'm I'm uh, on my state central committee and uh, was able to um, draft a resolution, and it uh, got through the resolutions committee and went to the state central committee, um, and uh, it passed. Um, I don't know that I would have been able to do that had I not been involved with PDPR and learning some of my rights um, as a, a member of the party. Um, when the resolution was brought to the floor of the State Central Committee, um, someone uh, spoke up, uh, 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 moved to amend it, and um, it was, uh, I don't know, it was, it was a little bit frivolous, and it seemed like it was someone um, just uh, a show of power, really. Uh, you know, they weren't going to let this just pass. And uh, the amendment kind of weakened the, uh, the resolution, but I was able to debate um, about the amendment. And, um, and in, in my debate, a, a point of order came up about the uh, bias of the chair. And I think um, it kind of exposed a little bit of that uh, at our state central committee meeting. Um, so, uh, you know, just learning what I can do. Yeah. I would like to uh, just comment on Christine's epiphany, which was she brought the motion before the, the committee in terms of a resolution, because what you often find people doing is not realizing that making a motion is how you bring business before the assembly. And you can talk all you want about doing something, but until you say the words, I move that, and then whatever you want to do, it doesn't become actionable. And yeah. that is why it really snaps everyone to attention because then they have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought I needed this big group, you know, because I still don't really have a big group, but <laughs> I have found ways to figure out how this works. And this, I just started in this group and I'm so happy, you know, that there's other people in other states to work on all this stuff with now. So thank you. I appreciate today. So. Do you see Linda's hand, Raymond? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yes, I do. Uh, Christine and Linda, please. It should be me, I guess. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm done. <laughs> I just, oh. just want to say that I I listened to a um, a podcast that you did quite a while ago. I think Larry, you were talking to Tina Berg, I think, and you got rules changed um, on members being allowed into the um, uh, meeting, even if they were late, by going through the credentials committee, and that kind of made me have thought you know because in our committee in LA it's so huge that they really that there is no time for debate and I kind of been thinking lately that maybe it's like a mini convention every time but anyway um, uh, when Tom was speaking he said that if you're not getting the papers in a timely manner which is very often the case where we are we get the agenda so late and sometimes the agenda is super big it's 
it's really hard to go through and understand what's going on. And, and I've always been wanting to change that. So um, my question is, is there a place, I, and I've gone to the, the meeting where the legislative committee, because sometimes there'd be a lot of legislation, and we've raised the question during the actual meeting, and they say, well, you should just go to the meeting, you know, do your homework, chick. You know, it's really offensive the way they answer, and like, like all the onus is on me to do the work, and, and they're not giving me the opportunity. I want to study what's coming up, but if they give it to me the night before, or even the day before, it's not an adequate Time. So I did. I was proactive. I went to the legislative meetings and the resolution meetings. But, you know, that takes up a really a huge amount of time. And uh, so where else could I go in order to get that? The easiest thing to do, assuming that you had allies, is to pass a, um, a standing rule, which we talked about earlier, because you just take a majority vote. And I think it's a very reasonable yes. thing to ask <laughs> that a agenda be made available, say, seven days in advance. And so, uh, you know, just I move that we have a standing rule that the agenda be published seven days in advance. And you know, if you get a majority to agree to you, then that becomes a standing rule which they must follow because that's that's something that is procedural. But me, hello. And hopefully, more people want it than you. Okay. Um, Thank you. It is now two fifty-five. Was there um, was there anything else in your session that you needed to cover, Raymond? Um, no, thank you. Um, and thanks everybody again for your participation uh, here with the summit and we'll see you all tomorrow. Yes, please come tomorrow because tomorrow is when we talk about the structure of the Democratic Party, which many of you might be unfamiliar with because it is the biggest kept secret uh, around. And then we're going to talk about the strategy on how you can in your state move our agenda of restoring democracy into the Democratic Party forward. And then uh, we will get the rooms working so we can have breakout sessions, so we can have uh, smaller discussions about what to do next. And then uh, we'll have a wrap up. So thank you so much for joining today. Again, we will, uh, it, it'll take a little bit, but we will also make uh, these sessions that have been recorded available in terms of videos, and we will post those on the PDPR website. So again, thank you so much for calling in today and joining us, and we will see you tomorrow.